Hello, and thanks for joining me for this midweek psalm and prayer together. To begin, I would like for you to think about uh, the boundaries of your profession or the boundaries of your school or your community, if there are boundaries that you know uh, are uncrossable. I'd like for you to think for the, about those for a moment. At this point, I will give you a warning. Having considered your own boundaries, your own professional things, uh, I am going to uh, break uh, a boundary that has been uh, explained to me in a thing that you're not supposed to do when you take a call as a pastor. I'm about to break that boundary. And I'm going to need your patience with me. When one takes a call as a pastor, they uh, are asked not to uh, let themselves enter into it. And I am always fully aware that that's an impossibility, that myself always enters into uh, who I am and, and what I do here. But this time I'm not even trying, I'm letting down too much guard and I'm crossing a boundary because I'm telling you something about how I've been affected and in doing so, uh, frankly, I'm laying myself bare. I ask you to think about your boundaries and I'm asking for your forgiveness for my own boundary breaking and doing this thing to you that I'm not supposed to do. This past Sunday, we gathered together for Reformation, which is a joyous day in the life of St. Stephen and the Lutheran Church. As part of that day, we uh, focused on or we confirmed uh, four students who are part of our congregation. And I don't feel like uh, it went how we would want it to go. I felt like uh, it was sort of besieged by the wind. We tried doing this outside and it was a cruddy day and uh, nothing really seemed to go well. I don't think the FM transmitter uh, did it uh, sort of clearly enough. The kids sort of come up, came up and it felt very thrown together. And I want this holy moment where I speak and gather with these kids and talk to them about the promises that were made at their baptism, this holy central thing to their life. And I just felt so removed from it being a moment together. And I felt bombarded by the wind, and I felt bombarded uh, by just the whole day as, as a whole. I went home, and I have been overly saddened by this. Uh, and I think I'm probably basically to the point uh, where I have to sort of throw my hands up. I know that people uh, are frustrated with their work, I know that people are frustrated with uh, the norms or the things that are going on with school, with their kids and grandkids. I know that all of us are facing a lot. And I am not really supposed to throw into that mix a thing where I lay myself out there and now you worry about me just as much as you're worried about all this other stuff. I mean, the last thing you need is another thing to worry about. But I've crossed the boundary now, and I've done so hopefully simply to share with you that I, just like you, have these moments where all I can do is come and sit in this quiet place. A quiet place that, by the way, if you would ever like to come and sit, you are more than welcome. And uh, I lit a few candles, and I uh, just wanted to take a few moments that while I know that the world around me is failing and that I am not holding on tightly enough and I feel like uh, I'm failing and I feel overwhelmed by that, that all there is left is a prayerful reading through the Psalms and a prayer with you and a call and a reminder that we are God's people and that we're in this together and that it isn't about me, and that somehow God can see us through this. A reading from the 34th Psalm. To me, this is a psalm of fidelity in the midst of sure brokenness. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have brought us safely through another night and into another day. There are times where it feels like our lives have not exited the night, that we have not been lifted and raised out of the waters that crash around us. Gracious God, we ask today for your strength. We ask for your reminder that it is not about any single one of us and that it never has been. We ask that we would be unified today as your people and that we can be mindful that this is something that we are indeed called into and through together. We ask where we feel brokenness and frustration and sadness that you and only you would breathe a spirit of resurrection and hope. We ask that you would guide us and keep us, hold all of us in your hands and protect us through this day and the rest of this week. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me yet again. Thank you for letting me unload on you just a little bit. I'm sorry to add that to all of the things that you're confronted by. But may you and I be strengthened. May we know that we are not alone, that we are in this filled with God's Spirit, and may you and I remain God's steadfast people, strong in the call of the Spirit and the community with God that God has set us in. May you all stay safe, may you all stay full of strength, 